Shalom, this is Reverend John Ferret. And in Matthew chapter 21, verses 42 through 45, and when we take a look at those verses, Jesus is implying that he is the stone that the builders rejected. That when we actually took a look at Psalm 118, verses 20 through 24, it wasn't that Jesus was the cornerstone. He was the Rosh Even Pina, and Pina basically means the turning place. So this is the chief stone of the turning place, which could be the cornerstone. And definitely we could say that God's stone, the first, Jesus is that first stone. However, again, Pina basically means the place of turning. Scholars agree it could also be the keystone of an arch, the last stone that's put in an arch to hold it together. This is the place where the arch walls turn to meet. Jesus, yes, is God's stone. He is the last. We see this in Revelation 20 through 13 when Jesus says, I'm the first and the last. It seems to fit this picture of the cornerstone and also the keystone of an arch, the first and the last stone. He's become the cornerstone and he's become the keystone. But the question is again, how is Jesus the first biblically? How does, how does the Bible support this? We've seen one example in episode four. Let's take a look at another example. Abraham camped with his family and all the other people that were with him. Isaac was born. And from Isaac comes Jacob, and from Jacob, the 12 sons, all the way to Israel. Lord said to Moses, when you go back to Egypt, see that you perform before Pharaoh all the wonders which I have put in your power. But I will harden his heart so that he will not let the people go. Then you shall say to Pharaoh, thus says the Lord, Israel is my son, my firstborn. Israel is chosen by God. And Abraham and Sarah are the ones that really had Isaac and Isaac to Jacob and Jacob to the 12 sons and all to Israel. It's a miraculous birth because, again, she could not have children because of her old age. Through Abraham, all nations of the earth will be blessed and Israel will be a light to the nations. Let me take you to Jerusalem. Take you to Jerusalem during the days of Jesus. And it's a fateful night because Jesus must be with his disciples, maybe having dinner. And on that fateful night, somebody knocks at the door and there is a secret meeting, a secret meeting between Jesus and Nicodemus. It is a very critical meeting. One of the things that happens in that meeting is Jesus says the following to Nicodemus. We read this in John 3, 16 through 18. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And it goes on. Now, only begotten, when we take a look at the Greek, the Strong's number is G3439, and it's pronounced monagones. And from Thayer's, Thayer's Greek lexicon, we actually see it's to be one to be one's only son. Wait a minute. I thought Israel was God's only son, his firstborn. But we need to make a clear distinction. Jesus, he is the first only begotten son of God, chosen by God. He has no earthly father. Israel was begotten by Abraham, the father of Israel. Yeshua is begotten by the Lord the father of Messiah, and our father. A miraculous birth? <laughs> it's so much more than that. It's a birth that's beyond comprehension because God begets his son. And Jesus is the blessing from Genesis 12, 3. And Jesus is the light of the nations. He is the cornerstone. As we read in Revelation 12, 13, he is the first. He is the beginning. So the Bible supports another view that Jesus is the first. Israel is the firstborn son, but Jesus is the first only begotten son of God, begotten by the Father. Amazing. And how else is Jesus the first? We're going to take a look at another example 
when we get to lesson six. Shalom.